Hi, this is Jonathan Messenger, and welcome to the Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. We're here today to satisfy my editor Griffin's request for an update on what happened to Voltronics Zoo. Griffin is actually in school right now, and Bebop said he had to go to the hardware store to pick up some stuff that his prank squad suggested. I'm not sure I like how that sounds, and I hope you all haven't been continuing to email him pranks. Anyway, I'm just going to jump right in. If you remember what happened a few episodes back, Voltronic Zoo was supposed to return to King Huxley's planet to update him on what was happening with the search for the amulet. But in the meantime, Paige and Nutkin have blasted off the planet and Voltronics is nowhere to be found. Well, we'll find out exactly where he is very soon in this special bonus episode, Miss Zoo Much. Nothing was looking familiar to Voltronics. It seemed like a full day had passed since he'd rocketed off the Epismorph's planet, but he had to admit that he was a little foggy on the details. It seemed like he'd shaken something loose when he tried to dive into that valley and banged against the rocks, chasing all of those little green hand babies. The King's planet should have been just a quick trip from Graco's, but... Where did that blue planet over there come from? And that red sun? Was that there before? Voltronics tried to ping the Marlow to orient himself, but no signal came back. Hmm. They must still be having electrical issues. No problem. But it was a problem, because Voltronics could now hear something. Something all around him. Voices. They seemed to be calling to him. Or... If not calling to him exactly, then singing to him. Voltronics! Voltronics Zoo! Voltronics Zoo! Voltronics! Who's there? Show yourselves! Voltronics turned off his boosters so he could slow down and look around. He wanted to be ready for anyone or anything. You have entered our galaxy, said the voices. Voltronics couldn't see where they were coming from. Your galaxy? What does that even mean? You can't have your own galaxy. Voltronics quickly ran a scan of his surroundings. It took his computer some time, and as it worked, the singing grew louder and louder. You have entered the singing galaxy. Voltronics didn't know it, but he had actually stumbled upon one of the great mysteries of the universe. Stories of the singing galaxy have been told for centuries. Some say the stars would sing to passers-by, lifting their spirits along the way. Others said it was the planets, trying to draw spaceships in. Some stories held that tiny, invisible aliens floating through the galaxy filled the cosmos with song. And some say those aliens have a little bit of trouble keeping the beat. The stories have been told so often and passed down through so many different generations and different tongues that most think the singing galaxy is just a story, a fairy tale, a sort of cautionary tale of the cosmonaut who's been out in space for way too long and begins hearing things. Many have tried to map the singing galaxy, but different stories put the different sightings light years away from each other and all over the known universe. In short, Voltronic Zoo was experiencing a real living legend right before his eyes. Of course, he couldn't really appreciate it. Singing Galaxy, don't be ridiculous. But then he saw little aliens flicker into view. They were dressed in beautiful white robes that shone like stars. Yes, that's right. You are in the singing galaxy. And now we have a song for you. Would you like to hear it? Actually, I think I'll be going now, said Voltronics, powering up his boosters. 
You all are creeping me out. Too late, the song has begun. His name's Voltronics. Who said that? He's on his way. He's on his way. To rescue Paige. True. And when he gets there, you best look out. Because Voltronics won't mess about. Okay. Voltronic Zoo. Remember his name. Yeah. Because his heroics will win him fame. Oh, I like that. He's Voltronics. I can dig it. Voltronics. That's my name. His name's Voltronics. He's on his way. I'm on my way. He's on his way. To rescue Paige. That's right. You need a hero. He's the boss. Yes. There's just one problem. Mm -hmm. He's really lost. I'm not. His GPS is on the fritz. No, it isn't. He's so far off, we call it quits. What? Voltronics. Okay. Back on track now. Voltronics. That's right. He could still make it in time to save. I will. Finn's little sister. Her name is Paige. True. But if you're gonna be a hero, yeah. your battery can't be zero. Right, it's not. There's been a signal for half an hour huh? that you're almost out of power. That's what the blinking light You might means. want to send a beacon because your friends okay. are probably freaking. Stop. Voltronics. Stop saying my name. Voltronics. My battery's fine. Hope somebody comes to get him. What? Hope somebody comes to get him. No, I don't. Hope I don't need any. I don't need any help. I'm. I'm. I'm perfectly fine. Never felt better. And as the song faded away, so did the light in Voltronics's chest as his battery died and his computer sent out one final beacon in the hopes that somebody would hear it. Okay, so I'm here all alone at the end of the show, and I suppose I could pull a bebop and try out my Griffin impression on everybody, but I don't think anybody would be fooled. One thing I do want to say is that I have been reading a lot of Greek mythology of late, some of it with Griffin, and this episode drew on some of those myths, which often involve some sort of demon or monster who attracts a wayward traveler through song. Although the aliens in the singing galaxy are much kinder to Voltronics than, say, the sirens in Greek mythology. But there are a lot of great Greek mythology books out there, and the one that we've been dipping into in this house is the National Geographic Treasury of Greek Mythology. You kind of have to pick and choose which stories to read, but there are some really fun ones in there. A couple of other things to talk about. One, we'll be back with a regular episode by the end of the week, so definitely check back before next Wednesday to hear what's happening with Finn and the crew. And number two, though mythology was on my mind, this episode really got its start. The seed of it was when five-year-old Ella from El Cerrito, California, submitted this to the sound club. I found that really catchy, so I tripled it up, added some effects to it, and that's really where the music came from, for the kind of song or cheer that the aliens do for Voltronics. And if you listen closely, you can hear this sound from four-year-old Witten from Northfield, Minnesota, which was added to Ella's stomping and clapping. And finally, the beacon sound at the end came from Daniel Woodside from New Zealand. And I added some delay and some other effects to that to make it sound a little more robotic and distressed, but a really cool sound from Daniel. So thanks so much for that. Sound Club really representing in this bonus episode. 
But the question is, who is going to pick up on that beacon? Who is going to hear it? We'll find out in a future episode. So thanks so much for listening, and we will see you very soon.